Carpal tunnel syndrome. What is carpal tunnel syndrome? What is the best treatment option for me? Carpal tunnel syndrome is a condition where one of the main nerves in the hand, called the median nerve, stops working properly. The nerve crosses the wrist into the hand from the forearm in a tunnel, which is called the carpal tunnel. The tunnel is a tight space surrounded by bones and a ligament. The nerve can become squashed in the tunnel, which leads to symptoms in the hand. Symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome include pins and needles, numbness or weakness in the hand. What are the treatments for carpal tunnel syndrome? Treatments include wrist splints, exercises, steroid injections, surgery. Wrist splints are useful for more mild to moderate disease. If you are having symptoms that come and go, for example pins and needles, particularly at night, a simple treatment such as a splint can be enough to improve symptoms. Wrist splints are thought to prevent progression of disease. What type of splint should I use? The best type of splint to use is a wrist brace or splint with a metal bar. The position of the wrist in the splint. A neutral wrist position or mid position is thought to promote a better blood supply to the nerve and further improve swelling. This can be achieved by flattening of the bar in the splint as in the diagram. These images show the correct position of the wrist after altering the metal bar in the splint. How do splints work? Studies have shown that wearing a splint at night reduces the swelling and inflammation around the nerve. Some people also find it useful to wear during activities that aggravate their symptoms. Nerve and tendon gliding exercises can be helpful for patients with carpal tunnel syndrome. Exercise can improve the gliding of the nerve, reduce scar tissue and improve blood flow to the nerve. Exercises can also reduce swelling and inflammation around the nerve, which in turn can reduce your pain. Which home exercises should I do? Warm up with forward and backward rolling of the shoulders. We then follow this with hand tendon gliding and nerve gliding. Hand tendon gliding exercises. These exercises move the tendons that run in the carpal tunnel. It is important to move the fingers into different positions. Firstly, make a fist and then straighten the fingers. Secondly, bend the fingers at the knuckles. Follow this with bending them at the second joint, taking care to keep the tips of the fingers straight. Then again, straighten the fingers. Keep the fingers straight, bend them all together at the knuckles as far as possible, then straighten the fingers. And lastly, curl the top two joints of the fingers into a hook position and then straighten the fingers. Nerve gliding exercises. Lift the arm away from the body until the hand is level with the shoulder at about 90 degrees, then bend the elbow, as in the picture, to about 90 degrees. Turn the palm towards your head, take the wrist back, and then straighten the elbow until it feels tight. There should be no pain. A sensation of gentle pulling is fine, but if you feel any pain or tingling, stop and retry taking the movement into a smaller range. How often should I do the exercises? We recommend that you do 10 repetitions of each exercise 10 times a day. The exercises should not provoke any of your symptoms. I'm struggling to fit the exercises into my daily life. We all lead busy lives, but the 10 sets of exercises should only take 20 minutes out of your day. Consider when in the day you can do the exercises most easily. How will I remember to do them? Try and find something that will remind you to do them. Some people do them each time they wash their hands or each time they have a drink. Other people find putting a reminder in their phone useful. Steroid injections. 
injections can be useful in cases with intermittent symptoms, i.e. where the symptoms come and go rather than are constant, and when the splints are not sufficient to control the symptoms. They are used to help confirm a diagnosis, but the effects are often short term. There are small risks of damage to the nerve with injection. Frequent injections for managing this condition is not advised. If you have constant symptoms, referral for consideration of surgery is appropriate. Surgery. People with more severe and more constant symptoms will need surgery for their carpal tunnel syndrome. The aim of surgery is to divide the ligament that forms part of the carpal tunnel so that there is more space for the median nerve. This reduces the pressure on the nerve and should improve your symptoms. It is important to realise that we cannot guarantee that all of your symptoms will go after the operation. This is because if there is already scarring in the nerve before the surgery, this cannot be changed by the operation. However, the surgery should stop any further pressure and further damage to the nerve. How do I know which is the correct treatment for me? Your treating clinician will advise you based on your symptoms and what treatments you've already received. More information can be found on this NHS link. Making a decision about carpal tunnel syndrome. For further information on surgery, please visit www.uhcwhand.org. In the section called Patient Leaflets, Chronic Conditions, there is further information on carpal tunnel syndrome.